Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. You know, I've always felt that I have a love-hate relationship with all you can eat buffets. On the one hand, I love buffets, mainly because I hate the dreaded food regrets. Yeah, that's a thing. You know, when you go to a restaurant and they have a lot of stuff you want on the menu, but after a lot of deliberation, you decide to go for one thing, but then see that your friend got something that looks and tastes much better, and they only offer you like a small little bite, and all you want to do is just grab that dish from them and just go to a corner and stuff your face with it. And what could make it worse is that the restaurants in a city you're visiting, and you know that you won't be back like ever, that's a life long food regrets, or what I like to call the South Africa incident of 2005. Anyway, buffets eliminate food regrets because, well, you can have anything you want and however much you want it. But at the same time, I also kind of hate buffets because, well, my family used to own one and I basically grew up working there and eating there every single day. Yeah, free child labor right here. Another thing I hate is that when you find that great buffet, you, you fall in love with it. You know, a typical food love story. And you see all these things you want to eat on the buffet and everything looks so good good, but you eat too much, and now you don't have the stomach space for dessert. But fear not, because of my intimate relationship with All You Can Eat Buffets, I'm gonna help you. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some of my own personal tips on how to make the most of your buffet experience. Basically, I'm gonna tell you how to get your money's worth. And to do this, you really need to treat the buffet as a, both a date and sometimes an enemy. Here's what you do. First of all, you need to get to know it. You know, like when you go on a first date. So at a buffet, just look at it. Take in all its beauty, then get to know it better, pay attention to it. I mean, don't talk to it because that might be a little weird, but see what it has to offer in terms of appetizers, soups, meats, the desserts. Okay, maybe that part is really not like a date, but whatever. The point is, get to know everything about the buffet because there is nothing worse than finishing your meal, walking up to pay the check, then realize that there was a fresh crepe station you didn't see. And I'll tell you from personal experience, it's not cool taking a fresh crepe to go. Number two, get your priorities straight. Now, when you're getting to know the buffet, you need to also start taking mental notes of what you want out of this relationship. I mean, dining experience. Are you into steaks, lamb, dessert? What is important to you? Whatever you think appeals to you, make sure to put those items on the priority list and arrange your meal so you can be sure to get to all of them. So like a temporary buffet bucket list, if you will. Number three, avoid the useless fillers. Just like you should be avoiding meaningless filler talk on days like, wow, the weather has been pretty hot lately, or sure has been a mild winter this year, you should also be avoiding all the things at a buffet that are designated as sacrificial fillers that really do nothing but take up a lot of valuable stomach space, like breads, pasta, or rice. This is especially true in Chinese buffets, where a lot of offerings are things like fried rice, or stir-fried lo mein, or that fried doorstop they call it an egg roll. Number four, go for value. Here's where you need to see the buffet as more of an adversary. See it as a, I don't know, the price is right game show. And just start picturing dollar signs at every single item on the buffet. Now I get that bowl of noodle soup where that dumpling may look appetizing and I'm not saying that you can't have at least one, but if the buffet costs like what $50 and you ate five dumplings, you just took up a lot of valuable stomach real estate with something that cost about a buck. So stock up on those crab legs and, and no crab rangoons don't count. Go for things that you have to work at to eat and, and try not using any shell crackers. Put more effort into it because the more energy you use, the more you need to replenish, hence the more crab legs you're able to eat. It's, it's just simple math. But do be careful because those things are sharp and if you injure yourself, that means the buffet won. Number five, go for uniqueness. Just like in any relationship, you're looking for something that stands out. The same thing applies for buffets. If you see, let's say, pizzas on a buffet in Vegas and you're from New York, chances are you can probably get much better pizza at home. So no matter how good that pizza looks, walk on by and go for things that really makes the buffet stand out. Number six, dress for the occasion. Just like you would for a date, you need to dress the part before going into a buffet. Leave those skinny jeans at home and make sure your belt can be loosened discreetly or, you know what, don't wear belts at all. And unless it's an upscale buffet, just, just, just dress like you would when you're about to board a long flight. Also, at a buffet, there's a lot of food movement going on, so maybe wear dark clothes just in case you spill something on yourself. Also, dark brings out your eyes. Number six, take the air out. Now, I make this mistake a lot because I just love sparkling water, but any carbonated beverage will make you feel full faster. And definitely stay away from the sodas because you will tend to drink more of that sugary mess when you're eating salty and savory foods, and thus, you're gonna fill up much quicker. Next up, Speaking of drinks, drink plenty of water before you go to the buffet. Just like in battle or on a day, you need to be prepared. And if you're gonna go to a very expensive buffet, and nowadays some buffets can cost over a hundred bucks, you wanna eat as much as you can. So drink plenty of water throughout the day because hydration helps digestion. And go ahead and squeeze some lemons into the water because it's gonna help reduce bloating and will prevent heartburns. Number eight, it's not a 
sprint. Buffets, just like relationships, are not sprints. Take your time, engage with it, visit it often, and take small bites every time. I am just talking about the buffet now, by the way. You know when you see all those food challenges, there's always a rule that you cannot use the restroom. Well, at a buffet, you can take as many restroom breaks as you want. And so if you need to go, you know, lighten the load or make a donation at the porcelain altar, there's nothing stopping you. Go for it, make some room, come back for more. Finally, number 10, this is the most important rule of all. Look, all these tips and hints, they're just things I personally find useful, but to maximize any buffet experience for me is that at the end of the meal, just like after going on a date, I want to know that I had a fantastic time. So you can incorporate these tips if you want, but make sure to really enjoy yourself. But still, stay away from those egg rolls. Like seriously, there's not even meat in them. Just some weird cabbage. Also, I'm pretty sure that's not real Chinese food. So there you go, guys. Those are all the things I've learned after a lifetime of this crazy relationship with all you can eat buffets. And this relationship, you know what, is probably going to continue for the rest of my life. So if I discover any more tricks and tips, I'll be forward to share with you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Happy buffeting.